Texas won 10 games for the first time since 2009. But can they keep up that momentum going into 2019? Find out here on The Gridiron Expert. Yeah. yeah. Is Texas really back? That's been the question this entire offseason. The Longhorns concluded 2018 with a berth in the Big 12 title game and a win over Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, 28-21, a game where the score looked a lot closer than it really was. The Longhorns won 10 games for the first time since 2009 when they went 13-1 with a berth in the National Championship game under Matt Brown. The question is whether or not the Longhorns can keep up that success going into 2019. They certainly return a very talented team and have a favorable schedule to do that, a year where many pegged them as a top 10 team and a potential college football playoff dark horse. The Longhorns return five starters on offense, but their biggest playmaker, of course, going to be their quarterback, Sam Ellinger, one of the best quarterbacks in the Big 12, maybe even in the entire nation, throwing for over 3,200 yards, 25 touchdowns, and just five interceptions in 2018, and also adding 16 touchdowns on the ground. Sam Ellinger, in my opinion, did not get enough attention in 2018, but you better start giving him attention in 2019 because he's poised for another huge year under Tom Herman. They return Keontae Ingram at running back who rushed for over 700 yards last year, and although they lose their leading wide receiver in Lil' Jordan Humphrey, they do return Colin Johnson, their second leading wide receiver in 2018, and arguably one of the best wide receivers in the entire Big 12. So this offense, I think, will be even better in 2019 than they were in 2018, as long as Ellinger can stay healthy and continue to put up the numbers like he did last year. Defensively, though, that's the biggest question for Texas. They only returned three starters on that side of the ball. They allowed 25.9 points per game last year, which isn't too bad. And I like what I don't think a lot of people understand is when they return three starters, I mean, a lot of people shut that down. But they still played a lot of people last year. This Texas defense has a lot of talent despite the lack of starters returning. I think they're going to be a lot more improved, a lot more challenging than people are giving them credit for, even though they only get three back and they lose their top three tacklers. But that's not going to be the reason for too many of these Texas losses. If any Texas losses, this defense is legit once again under Tom Herman. And Texas is a Big 12 title contender once again in 2019. They open the season against Louisiana Tech. And as if they didn't even need more motivation to win this game after losing their season opener the past two seasons to Maryland, Terry Bradshaw came out, the former Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, the legendary Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback and former quarterback at Louisiana Tech, saying that he likes his guys at Louisiana Tech better than Sam Ellinger at Texas because he is, quote, not that good. Texas will annihilate Louisiana Tech in week one. They are hungry to get finally a season opening victory under Tom Herman. It's at home. Expectations are high. This is a different Texas team than the one that's been the past two years. And I think they beat the Bulldogs and proved Terry Bradshaw wrong in week one. Sam Ellinger has a phenomenal night. Then, obviously, the biggest game on their schedule, maybe outside of that Oklahoma game, at home against LSU, a potential top 10 showdown in just week two of the season. But the problem is this LSU team is legit. This LSU team is tough. They're going to be one of the best teams in the entire nation. Their offense is going to be even better in year two with Joe Burrow at quarterback, but their defense is what scares me more than anything. They are going to have one of the best defenses in the entire nation. Grant Delpit, Christian Fulton, and Derek Stingley make up what could arguably be the best secondary in all of college football. And they're going up against a very potent offense in Texas. Uh, for LSU, I hate that this game is on the road for them. If it was in Death Valley, I would have no doubt in my mind that I would be picking LSU. But even though it's in Austin, I'm going to pick LSU to win this game. I think Texas falls. I think their defense struggles against what will be a potent passing attack from Joe Burrow. And I think this Texas offense struggles against, like I said, this very talented LSU defense. Many people have said they expect this game to be similar to the LSU blowout win over Miami to kick off the season last year. I don't think it's going to be that big of a margin of victory. But I do think LSU comes on the road and beats this Texas team for a quality win that will boost their resume. And if Texas wins, it'll certainly boost their resume and their hopes to make the college football playoff. But the Longhorns fall at home to LSU, who are going to be scary good in 2019. 
They go to NRG Stadium and annihilate Rice, and it's so sad to see such a huge stadium have to witness such a horrible blowout. The Longhorns will not have any issues with the Owls in Week 3. They are 2-1 and one going into Big 12 Conference play, facing off against Oklahoma State. And last year, at number 6 in the country, Texas fell to Oklahoma State on the road, 38-35. to This year, though, this Oklahoma State team's a little bit different. Fortunately for Texas, they get to host this game in Austin. But Oklahoma State has questions at quarterback. It'll be Spencer Sanders or Drew Brown. They have Chuba Hubbard at running back, but how are their defense fair? Texas, at home, hungry to avenge that loss they had last year, and their offense certainly going to be clicking here. They get the win over Oklahoma State, and they are 3-1 and one going in to a week four bye week going into the road game at West Virginia. And last year, also for Texas, at, following the Oklahoma State loss, they came back home to face off against West Virginia and fell by just one point to Will Greer and that very potent Mountaineers offense. One of the best games, in my opinion, of the entire 2018 season. But West Virginia will have a much different look this year. Dana Holgerson is gone. Will Greer is gone. Some of their bigger defensive playmakers are gone. David Sills is gone. West Virginia is going to have a huge overhaul across the board. Even though this game is on the road, I think Texas gets an easy win on the road against a rebuilding Mountaineers squad, especially with a bye week beforehand. Texas beats West Virginia. They're 4-1 and one going into a huge game against Oklahoma. And this will be the game that decides maybe who finishes at the top of the Big 12 standings. Because it is, it is possible for whoever loses this game to still make the Big 12 title game. We saw that last year with Oklahoma, who lost to Texas 48-45, to and then got the revenge over the Longhorns in the Big 12 title game, thus giving them a berth in the college football playoff. The Red River rivalry, though, is one of the best rivalries in all of college football. Expect a very close game once again in 2019. But I think Texas owns the edge at quarterback. Even though Oklahoma brings in Jalen Hurts from Alabama, I think Sam Ellinger gets a slight edge over them. He's been in the system longer at his respective school. And even though I think Jalen Hurts has a lot of talent and a lot of talent surrounding him, including a potent rushing game, I think Texas' defense steps it up big in this one, and they beat Oklahoma for the second straight year. Back-to-back Red River rivalry wins for Texas, and the Longhorns are now 5-1 and one with a huge win over Oklahoma and a quality loss to LSU. If they can keep that game close against LSU, they will not drop far in the rankings. They stay at home and I think annihilate Kansas. Last year, they won, only beat Kansas by seven points. It was a lot closer than many expected. And yes, the Jayhawks bring in Les Miles, one of the best tires of the 2018-2019 offseason. But Kansas still has a lot of work to do. Texas defense had to step it up against Puka Williams, arguably the best playmaker on the Jayhawks in 2019. But this, with this game being in Austin, with Kansas going through a rebuilding mode, they'll be much more competitive. But you're not going to see many wins from the Jayhawks in 2019. Texas certainly will not be one of them, and they get the win over the Jayhawks. And Texas, still a top-10 team, still a college football playoff contender, and undefeated in Big 12 conference play. They go on the road to face off against TCU, and last year's game against the Horned Frogs really proved to me that at the time being, and maybe still are, Texas was back. The week before they beat TCU, they had just beaten USC by 23 points. Then they remained at home and beat TCU 31-16, and the Horned Frogs were number 17 in the country. That game showed me that Texas was back. They were legit, despite losing to Maryland in that season opener. This year on the road against TCU, a team that does not have themselves a quarterback yet, still has a lot of questions at that position, expect themselves to have a dominant rushing game, expect themselves to have a dominant defense, expect TCU to have a major bounce-back year after a disappointing 7-6 season in 2018. But Texas will go on the road and beat the Horned Frogs. A major trap game, of course. You never want to underestimate Gary Patterson. But Texas will beat TCU on the road and remain undefeated in Big 12 Conference play. They get a bye week to kick off November. And I like teams that get that bye week entering November because it's one of the most hectic months and one of the most important months in all of college football. Going into that bye week, they have Kansas State right after it. And luckily, I wish that Iowa State game was there. For Texas' sake, I wish Iowa State was right after that bye week. Because I think Texas, without the bye week, can take care of the, of the Wildcats at home. 
Kansas State, once again, like many of these other Big 12 schools, four of them to be exact, are going to be under new management. They'll be led by Chris Kleiman coming over from North Dakota State in the FCS. And even though I think he was given the most talented team out of the four brand new head coaches, it still might not be enough to get to bowl eligibility in his first year in Manhattan. A week of rest at home against a Kansas State team that's going to be dealing with a lot of changes. Texas beats the Wildcats, but keep in mind that the past three games between these two schools have been decided by one possession, including a five-point victory last year for Texas and a double overtime victory for them two years ago, the last time it was in Austin. So don't overlook Kansas State, but I do think that Texas gets the win. But then you heard me say that I wish that bye week was leading into the Iowa State game, and that's because I think Texas takes their first Big 12 loss on the road against Iowa State. If they had a week of preparation there, it may have uh, kind of altered my decision here. But Iowa State, if you watch my video there, at Jack Tri Stadium, you heard me say that's where dreams go to die. And Texas's dreams of potentially making the college football playoff could die when they go to Ames towards the very end of the season. They would already have a loss to LSU. This would be their second loss. Even a win in the Big 12 title game over potentially Oklahoma could maybe not be enough to get them into the college football playoff. That would be up to the committee. But I think they fall to a Cyclones team that returns 16 starters, 8 on offense, 8 on defense. And that defense is what will be the key in this game. I think it's the defense that steps up, shuts down Sam Ellinger and this Texas offense, and then... I think Iowa State's offense, led by Brock Purdy and that great crew of wide receivers, is able to exploit enough weaknesses in Texas's defense. They get the win at home. And Matt Campbell's well, the fourth year now with the Cyclones, doing a phenomenal job with them, and they are legitimate Big 12 title contenders. They get a win over Texas at home. Texas suffers their first loss in conference play. And I will say that November 16th and November 23rd might just look like an average game for the Longhorns. At Iowa State, at Baylor, nothing to worry about there. But those are two of the biggest trap games on the Longhorns' schedule in 2019. Everybody has LSU circled. Everybody has Oklahoma circled. But Iowa State and Baylor are going to be some of the toughest tests for Texas in 2019. We just mentioned that loss to Iowa State. Now Baylor on the road. The Bears nearly came on the road last year to Austin and beat Texas. They nearly came on the road and won that game, only losing 23 to 17 and having a chance to win it, throwing an incomplete pass from the 17 yard line to end the game. Baylor returns eight offensive starters and seven defensive starters, including Charlie Brewer at quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the entire Big 12. Probably one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the entire Big 12. Matt Rule is building something in Waco. Baylor could win anywhere from 7 to 9 regular season games in 2019. Texas cannot over afford to overlook this game, especially coming off a loss to Iowa State. I think they go on the road and beat Baylor, but it will be a narrow margin. They could trail for the majority of this game. But in the end, I think they end up squeezing out a win in this one in a close game against Matt Rule and his Bears. Texas wins this game before closing out the year with Texas Tech at home. Last year's game was an absolute thriller. Texas winning 41-34, to scoring a game-winning touchdown with just 21 seconds left. A, very, a game very reminiscent of that 2008 game between the Red Raiders and Longhorns. The roles were just reversed. Texas Tech scored with very little time left in 2008 on a wild catch. Same happened for Texas 10 years later. But I think they beat Texas Tech in this game, another school that will be led by a brand-new head coach and Matt Wells. Expect the Red Raider defense to improve in 2019. I love their quarterback in Alan Bowman, and I don't think the offense will take that big of a drop-off in production, if any. But with this game being at home, and Texas, in my opinion, still clearly having the talent gap there and a talent edge there, I think they beat the Red Raiders to close out the year because, keep in mind, their Big 12 title hopes are still on the line, especially with that loss to Iowa State. But I think they beat Texas Tech, and that will give them a 10-2 record in 2019. And that will only mean one conference loss. Two of those losses, one loss coming to LSU, a quality opponent in non-conference play, one loss coming to Iowa State in conference play. 10-2, and two, which should be good enough to get them to their second straight Big 12 title game appearance. Whether Who they face off against remains to be seen, whether it will be Iowa State, Oklahoma, or maybe a surprise team in TCU or Baylor. More than likely, though, it will be a rematch against Oklahoma. If they win that, they are no doubt a contender for the college football playoff. The committee cannot overlook a two-loss Texas team that has two quality losses and two wins over the Oklahoma Sooners. 
So Tom Herman and his Longhorns, if they can live up to the hype, if Texas is really back, are not only Big 12 title contenders, but college football playoff contenders in 2019. So guys, as always, thank you for watching. Please go check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Gridiron Expert. And make sure to go check out our official website, thegridironexpert.com. Sign up for our newsletter and sign up for our expert picks. For just $30, you will receive every single one of our 2019 college football spread picks, including the postseason. And I can promise you that's a deal you do not want to pass up. So join our team and sign up today only at thegridironexpert.com. And guys, as always, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.